An interesting part about mono printing is that once we pull our first print from a plate, we can do something called a ghost print. And you'll notice that on my plate, there's still some pigment left, specifically, you know, oil pastel lasts quite a bit. Um, even parts of the watercolor are still there on my plate. And we can do something called pulling a ghost print. A ghost print is where we take our mono print and we print it one more time after we've already transferred the image. So we'll see that that will lead us to have a lighter printed effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece of paper out of my wet pack and I'm going to place it over my um, image that I've created again. I have my trusty spoon for pressing and I'm going to go along my paper just as I did before, pressing all the while making sure that my thumb is nicely in that groove of the spoon. Ooh, I know that my paper move a little bit. I've got to be really careful to make sure that it's super flat. Mono printing can be a little bit temperamental and requires a good amount of muscle. So I'm going to keep going all the while, pressing in all of the parts. I'm going to go over a second time. It's a good time to talk about, you know, my print moved a tiny bit as I was pressing. The reason why printing can be kind of temperamental is that we don't have a huge amount of control over the final, like we do with a painting or a drawing where we can go back and erase or cover up with paint, scrape away. We don't have that power with mono prints. So the reason um, they're interesting, but also tricky is that you don't have that power. So that's why you always want to, you know, make sure that you have enough paper to do some experiments with your prints or to leave room if something turns out a way you don't like. So now I'm going to lift, holding down at one end and pulling up from the other gently. And you'll see that I have in comparison to my original mono print, a much lighter print, and that's called a ghost print. So you can see like a ghost of an image. It's less um, saturated, but you can still see those forms. And it can be really interesting depending on the effect you're trying to get to take advantage of ghost prints. And it would even be really interesting to take your ghost print and maybe apply, once your paper is dry, apply the pochoir technique to highlight certain parts, or you could do your ground in mono print, wait for it to dry, your paper, I mean, wait for your paper to dry, and then apply pushwa over top. Some ideas to think about, combining those processes in a really interesting way. Okay, so that is how you make a ghost print using the mono print technique.